It's 2024, we're here, we survived. I know it's been a while, but I'm back. And today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which are watches. We're going to specifically be talking about what your favorite watch brand says about you to me, according to me, not according to anybody else that has opinions on watches. It's me, okay. If your favorite watch brand is, and we're gonna start off strong with Omega. There's a few words I associate with this brand when I think about a person who would buy an Omega in general. So the words I think, um, a Bond fan. You love James Bond, maybe a little too much, but Bond is a great thing to love, so good for you. Another thing I think is good taste, truly. Another possibility is, sorry I'm fidgeting a lot, I'm standing, um, anyway. Yes, so another thing I think is you couldn't quite afford a Rolex, but in the end you got a better quality watch, arguably. Anyway, so you lucked out. The kind of car I think you would drive as an Amiga lover, this is obviously very broad, but I think you would drive any car. It could be any car. Amiga is uh, popular with men who love watches of all demographics financially so anybody could really be driving any car and wearing an Omega it's a solid brand so I have respect for you if you're wearing an Omega automatically I know you have at least some good taste next Rolex and now listen trigger warning I automatically think of really gaudy gold on gold when I think of Rolex however I know there are some Dejas, Daytonas, different ones that are absolutely, undeniably beautiful pieces. And I know that. They don't all give this vibe. However, I can't help it. It's been embedded into my brain since I was a small girl. When I think Rolex, I automatically think owner of a chain of gas stations. Like, you're successful. You got money. You're flexing on purpose. But you, you own gas stations. That's fine. You wear a Bluetooth earpiece as well and probably you're not even really talking to anybody you're just trying to ignore customers as you're ringing them up get it i totally get it next is super clone you know it's really i always question when i see somebody wearing a rolex i think when i see rolex the possibility of them being fakes is so high it's crazy how good these clones are it's like oh it makes it a little bit stressful right i also think a man that is he wants to make sure his watch is recognized by anybody who knows anything about, you know, watches at all or money. I think that's an obvious choice because nobody's go everybody's going to recognize it. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I want, there's a couple of Rolex that I want. So absolutely no shame in that. And it doesn't mean they're not beautiful, well-made pieces. But I don't think the flexing thing is necessarily, it's always that to that extent, right? I think sometimes truly just like women we love beautiful diamonds and jewelry and we love to do our makeup bold and exciting because it's attention grabbing but it's also accentuating your beauty or it's appreciation of beauty like when women we wear cartier like the love bracelet i don't wear it personally but you know i don't look at that when a woman's wearing it and judge like she just wants to show off that she's wearing five thousand dollars on her wrist I don't think that at all. So, you know, I don't judge all guys for wearing them at all, but there's, you know the type. The type of car I think you would drive, ideally, or just like in my mind, I would connect one of two. There's like the most recent model of Corvette or the last three years, that Corvette specifically. And also a Lamborghini. It could be any Lamborghini, really. Next, we have Patek Philippe. Patek Philippe is a very specific type of watch because to me, in my mind, the status of Patek Philippe is above Rolex. I think that, yes, it is. However, the popularity, it's not as widespread. And I'm not talking about the Nautilus, I'm not talking about the Aquanaut, I'm talking about the Calatrava, something very classic Patek Philippe that you'd look at and you'd be like, yes, that's Patek Philippe. And it's an heirloom, it's something you take care of. Of course you should take care of all of your watches, but Patek Philippe is very special, so I think sophistication. I think also somebody who wants to make sure to flex a bit, however, he only wants to appeal to people who are in the know. Because a lot of people would look at a Patek Philippe, now I know if you're a watch lover and you're watching this, you're like, what are you talking about? Everybody would recognize Patek Philippe. You know better, that is not the case. Um, that's not one of the, the most, even though it is 
a huge popular widespread name don't get me wrong I don't think it's some underground thing it's just from a distance people will look at it they're not going to recognize it the same way they recognize a Rolex any Rolex really so I think it's a bit more understated so I think for Patek Philippe I think the kind of car you'd be driving you would be driving uh, I would say a nice Bentley you know perhaps a perhaps an Aston Martin something very classy something obviously expensive however very elegant sleek and not gaudy not tacky or anything like that there's also a slight chance that you are a child of nepotism a young man of nepotism and you don't understand how you come across as an only child but you would be perfectly fine covering up a murder with daddy's money and that would just be any given Tuesday for you. Next we have Richard Mail. If this is your brand, this tells me that you really like expensive stuff and it, it can get to the point where it doesn't really even matter if it looks good. It just needs to be expensive, you know? You have expensive taste, but at the same time, money cannot buy taste if that makes sense. So perhaps you live in one of those modern Kanye West-esque mansions where everything is concrete for some reason. I think it really is just one of those things where it's like, I have a million dollars on my wrist. I have just about a million dollars on my wrist because I can. And screw you, you would never understand how this feels. The name of the man that comes to mind instantly is Anthony Ferrer. I was about to mention him with the Rolex, but I just thought I would take it one step further with Richard Mille. That's just another level of unnecessary. And Anthony Ferrer is all about flex culture and keeping up. I don't even want to say keeping up with the Joneses because it's not even quite that. It's just, it's very much I'm the man vibes, but very much not being the man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm not saying it's always vulgar. I mean, I'm not saying it's vulgar at all. Don't say that. Yeah, it's not cute to me. Personally, personally. to me, the kind of car that a Richard Mille owner would drive would, of course, I'm going to bring it back, the Lamborghini, some type of Lamborghini. It's probably yellow or lime green. Probably. Why, why not, right? Like, that's a nice color. Um, that's easy on the eyes, isn't it? I want to say Bugatti, but... Yeah, Bugatti for sure. It's giving Andrew Tate vibes, if that makes sense. I don't know if he even wears a watch. I'm curious what Andrew Tate wears. Next, we have Audemars Piguet. For an Audemars Piguet, I think of a masculine man. This is a man's watch, and I have seen women wear them and pull them off expertly, but to me, it definitely is something that you have to be a strong kind of guy, like with a with a strong frame. You can't be a flimsy little blow away in the breeze man and wear an Audemars Piguet. It just doesn't work. There is a little bit of a problem though. I'm starting to associate with Audemars Piguet. Now it's just for me because it's not my lifestyle taste, but it's very popular with rappers. And I would say nine times out of 10 when I look at rappers personal style, I don't find anything elegant about it. And I know, that's fine, they're not going for that. But I am, that's my taste. So I can see good and bad things about it, but some words that come to my mind would be industrial, you know, concrete jungle. Um, I think city nights, I think, yeah, I think masculinity. I don't think anything really bad about it. What kind of car would you be driving? I could see a BMW 5 Series. I could see an Audi A7. But also when I see it on a man that's maybe well-dressed, more classy from my personal taste. It gives new money in a good way. So it's not bad. I like it, okay? Don't, don't, don't even start with me. Next, we have Hublot. I think if you're wearing an Hublot, my opinion is you are likely a young man. You came from money, okay? You have a rich family, but you kind of went the route of the douchey vibes versus the classy vibes, and you want to fit in with your young friends, you might be Russian. I don't find the pieces generally to be very sexy in my opinion. I just personally don't love them. That's fine. But yeah, I think only child for sure. Your friends may or may not have been accused of putting roofies in a girl's drinks in college. If you are wearing a new blow, you're most likely driving an Audi R8. Yeah. Next, Breguet. What do I feel about Breguet? I'm thinking 
very understated, which is gonna fit perfectly with the car I'm gonna select for this piece. Very understated, even more so than Patek Philippe. People will not recognize Breguet, mostly. Of course, other watch lovers will, but in the wild, nobody knows what a Breguet is. You want to wear something timeless, expensive, right? You earned it. Something quality, something with history, something with a soul. You don't care if other men don't recognize it. You don't care because it's you that gets the treat of wearing it. To me, that's a very, it's very cool. So I would say the kind of car you'd go for would be a Volvo S90. You might be thinking Volvo, that's very random, but the S90 is one of their flagship models and it just, it just screams understated refinement. And it's one of those things where you wouldn't look at it and instantly recognize its value. But if you go inside of a Volvo S90, you're, it's like you're in a spaceship, but not in the Tesla way. It's very much your super wealthy, successful, well-mannered grandfather's choice of a nice luxury vehicle, you know. So I just think that's perfect. Thank you for joining me today and I appreciate your patience with me. I love you all, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.